Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to cover everything about window pulls. Now if you're not familiar with window pulls or if you've been doing window pulls for a long time you need a refresher or perhaps you're having some problems doing window pulls, I've tried to make this tutorial as broad as possible to cover all the various levels of skill set that you might have. Now if you're not familiar with window pulls it's a matter of taking the outside view and making it come in. Now it's a real Really neat trick to do, but it actually has a lot of value in real estate photography under certain circumstances. So before getting to the technical examples, which I'm going to show two for a very simple window pull to show the basics of it, and then an advanced window pull, it's important to note that window pulls aren't always necessary. So unless there's a view which you're really trying to sell through real estate photography, then it doesn't really apply. You don't want to necessarily show a view of a bunch of traffic out outside, the neighbor's house, just a plain brick wall. Sometimes that's best left to having a lot of blown out conditions around the window so you have that nice white light coming in. So this is a tutorial on the window pulls when they do apply. So it doesn't have to be the most stellar view, although I'll show you one. One of the examples is of a nice lake view from a kitchen. But they can also be views of the backyard to show the indoor outdoor living, to show that you've got great picture windows around. And that's going to be in the first example. Now, you might hear others say that, oh, it might look too posterish or it might look uh, too nuclear or something like that. But I can guarantee you, for all the years I've been doing this and all the realtors that I work with, they want to see this. Remember, this is actually a selling tool. So, what we do for real estate photography is marketing material, and this is what realtors will want to market their property. Even the designers that I work for, they like to see backyards in their views when I'm shooting kitchen because that's also how you perceive it when you're there and it helps to complement what they're doing. But like I said, there are circumstances where if you're not really selling a view, you don't have a view to show it's not really worth it, either a blown out view or a semi blown out view of the window will suffice. But this tutorial will be on the cases when you want to see the view outside and that's a window pull. You ready to see how this is done? Let's get started. So here's our first example, and this is going to be using as long as well as the second example, the flash ambient technique for blending. And now with that, then we're going to add a window pull on top of it. So I'll just go through some of this just very quickly. Normally through the flash ambient blend, and by the way, if you're not familiar with flash ambient blending, I do have information on that and also my uh, book on interiors. When I have a link down in the description for this video to all the books in my real estate photography series. Also, there's a link up here if you look in the top right, and there's a link to a video that shows the whole process more in depth. But I've already applied all of the standard geometry presets here to my ambient shot. I've got then my flash shot, and this actually isn't that bad for showing some of the views outside, but I brought this up to show you. You can see up here, this is blown out from the flash, so this window up here is not looking good because the flash is reflecting off of it, and that can happen in certain circumstances. There are going to be other reflections I'm going to get into in a minute. But we can go further with that and then we can do this exposure. Now this may look very terrible because it's very blown out, but what we're doing is we're exposing for the window. So let's back up a minute and talk about what the exposures were to get everything we needed. First, ambient exposure. We're using here ISO 320 at an aperture of f7.1. This happened to be one tenth of a second. Once we got into our flash to get rid of then all the ambient artifacts, everything stayed the same except the shutter speed, which went up to one one hundredth of a second. And as I point out in my books and other videos, notice the histogram is just right of center. Now we go to the window pull. To get that view outside, I had to drop the ISO down to 250 to be able to match a near sync speed for the flash on the camera, which here is 1 one sixtieth of a second. Now I could have gone to 1 two hundredth of a second, but when you're using triggers, you sometimes have to back down some of that sync speed because there are some delays and you could start seeing curtain on some cameras. So what I like to do is max out my window pulls at 1 one sixtieth of a second. Don't change 
change the aperture. There's no need to do that. You can drop the ISO. And here I dropped it down to 250. And that got me a real nice blue view. Now, everything else is blown out, but that will go away when we take this in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and bring this into Photoshop. And I'll right click on all those and go edit and open as layers in Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to do the full flash ambient blending. I'm going to take a shortcut known as the 50 50 blend, where I just mix that uh, ambient layer at uh, 50% as uh, in luminosity mode and you've seen me do that on uh, other videos as well so let me go ahead and photoshop by the way does this weird thing sometimes in its latest version doesn't stay maximized so anyways we've got those layers in there and i'm just going to apply a quick 50 50 to it by just changing this to luminosity mode and changing its opacity to 50 percent so let's say that that's good maybe we'll add it to about 60 percent now we want the window pole to come into play so that's that bottom layer, the last shot. We move that up to the top, and remember what we did here. This was overexposing. I have the flash pointed almost directly at the windows. You can tell by the angle of these shadows that are coming off the stair, uh, the banister, and also then off the furniture, that the flash was shooting into this room at about a 45 degree angle. You can even see some of it hitting the window up here. I'm not too concerned about that, but that's the idea. You're not bouncing at this point, you're pointing the flash at those windows. Now, we're going to have a problem in the next example doing this where we get too much flash in there and that can cause an issue. But for now, this is what we'd be after. Now, how do we get the window itself? Now, you might think that, oh, well, I can just go ahead and cut out each one of these little squares. That would take way too much time. Instead, by overexposing the interior while you're exposing for the exterior, if you turn this layer then into darken mode, then that overexposed area goes away. But we still have these shadows and whatnot. So all you do is you add a layer mask, layer mask hide. Now, you can do this a number of different ways. Since the, you can take a brush at 100% flow, and then you can just paint in those windows. And look how I'm overlapping. It just doesn't matter, right? Because it's overexposed areas that I'm brushing over, and so those go away. Another trick, now I've got a little bit of shadow there, not a biggie, I can edit that out later if I wanted to. But I can also take a polygon and just draw around the entire area of a window, invert my colors by pressing X, and hit the delete key. That's all that I'd have to do. So I could do this for all these other windows. Just simply use a polygon around there with my inverted colors, just hitting the delete key. In fact, I'll do it for this big old thing here and I'll just take that whole area and boom, there we go. Now what happens though is you can get some of this going on and of course then you just use an eraser and take some of that out inverting my colors back to white and black using an eraser and then you would just erase that away. So however you want to do it, whether it's a brush, a selection, doing stuff like that, you can see it's much faster though to do it this way. I'll take my brush and finish these other uh, two off. It's faster to do it this way than to try to cut out each individual uh, window. So a lot of work that would have to be done to, to try to do that where just by once again overexposing for the uh, interior and then exposing for the exterior, you can then get this uh, type of window pull that allows you to, if you want to, you can just uh, overlap real quick. You don't have to worry about cutting too close. Now there are some issues up here where the, uh, you can see I got like a reflection up here. I've got some other stuff kind of going on with some of these shadows. So that's a more complicated window pull and we'll cover some of that in the second example. But anyways, after this was all done with the entire flash ambient blending, the final product looked like this. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go ahead and close this example. That was just your basic window pull. Let's go to a more complex example. So here we have this kitchen, and it's hard to tell from here, but it's got a great view of a lake. This is our ambient shot. This is then our flash shot. And you can start seeing some of that lake view coming in, but we don't have enough of it. So did the window pull. Now you can see here though, we've got some problems. Once again, to get that really clear view, because there was a lot of sun beating in here on this Southern California home, I dropped the ISO to 250. Sometimes I have to drop it to 160 or 100. Another tip too is if you can't get low enough, don't uh, go ahead and lower your aperture, increasing that F number. You want to then just overexpose like this. And if you needed to, you could then drop the exposure in Lightroom to get it even dark. And you can see 
see I'm still overexposed on the inside. But we don't want to do that. This is fine. The exposure looks good for this window pull. But there is a problem in that we've got a lot of reflections showing up in the window. So how do you get rid of that? What you do is you take what I call a repair shot. And this is just without any flash at all. So it's the same exposure that we used when we did this overexposure. And remember, just like on the last one, I'm pointing the flash near the windows. It's angled a little bit. You can see though that from the harsh shadows showing up here in this hot spot here, this was almost directly at the windows, kind of at an angle to work off the angle of incidence. But so it's the same exposure here, but you can see the color is not the same. So we have to match the white balance. So you just go to your flash shot and you can see here, it's 4950 negative one. I just input those numbers over here. So I'll go to over here and enter 4950 and then negative one. Now we have the same uh, color on this one because it's got the same white balance that we have on this. Now let's go ahead and open all those as layers in Photoshop. I'll do it from the menu this time. I'll P E O O and we'll open those as layers in Photoshop. So basically the same thing will happen when we first do the flash ambient blending. The window pull will start out the same, but I'm going to do something very unique using that repair layer. All right. And the repair layer, by the way, it's used in cases where we've got, it's going to take a little bit more time. So it's it's not for every home. Sometimes though, with a home like this that it was gonna go for about 2.4 million, then yes, it's definitely worth it. And of course, for the job that I'm uh, charging for it, it's definitely worth it. So anyways, we have our uh, ambient layer on the top. I'll just do a quick 50, change into luminosity mode, and then change the opacity down to 50%. Maybe we can do it up 60% or something like that. And that's probably fine. We can play around with that as much as we want, but let's work on the window pole. So first, we'll take the window pole itself, the flashed window pole, bring it up to the top like we did the last time, and we'll put it into darken mode, and then layer mask hide. Now, I can do that like I did before. I'll just draw a polygon around here. I could use a brush or whatever I'd like. It'd just be quicker here, I think, just to use the polygon. So we'll just do that, invert my colors, hit delete, invert my colors back. Now we have the reflections to deal with. So this is where there's two ways to do this, and there's two windows here that will work as a prime example. I'm gonna take the repair layer and put it all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Layer, mask, hide. Now, what I can do is I can take a polygon and I don't have to get up against the window, I just have to get kind of close to it because the flashed window pull has taken care of getting me the window separation to the frame. The rest of this doesn't matter. Now that I have that selection, let's feather it a little bit to make it look realistic for our next step. So go to select, modify, feather, and we'll feather that by let's say five pixels. Now invert your colors and hit delete. And that's it, revert my colors back. Now you can see what happened. It feathered in very nicely and got rid of those reflections. I didn't have to though, worry about getting right up to the very edge because that's where the flashed window pole down here took care of that. It got me up to the window frame. This gets me a little closer. Now, what do I do about this window though? If I were to cut all that out, that faucet's gonna turn black like that. So I don't want that to happen. So there's another technique for that. Take the polygon tool and draw around the area that you really want to try to get rid of some of the reflections. Now I'm just gonna get rough around here. Don't have to worry too much. And I could try to feather that in, but you don't have to. When you can see here, I even missed a, a part because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a brush at a low flow, let's say about 30%. And I'm just gonna start brushing in some of this. Now look at where my brush is. My brush is way outside of the polygon. It doesn't matter because only the area inside the polygon is affected when you're doing this technique. So by drawing a polygon first, then you can um, e brush or erase or whatever it is and it'll only affect that area. I've got a little bit of an outline here, so I'll just go ahead and erase some of that out of here. Then the same thing could be done for the other window too. But basically when this then was all said and done after the final post processing, the final product looked like this. 
So the flash ambient blending is one thing. The window pull is something in addition to that. So if you've never done flash ambient blending before, once again, I talk about that step by step through the interiors book. And I also cover window pulls as well. But for window pulls, there's something very important to remember is that you need to do two basic things. One, you need to be able to expose for the exterior. So it's sometimes good to take a repair shot with no flash anyways, just to see that you are exposing for that. And like I said, sometimes I can usually stay at about ISO 320 F 7.1 and then take my shutter speed to about 1 1 60th of a second. But a lot of times I have to lower that in Southern California, big windows, bright conditions beaming in. I might be going a lot lower than that, but windows usually are treated to where it's not the same exposure if you were standing outside taking that exterior picture. But anyways, expose for the outside. That's step number one. Number two, overexpose the inside with flash. But there's a balance to that. As you saw in the second example, I overexposed it so much with so much flash that I got a lot of reflections in the window. Now, the repair layer can come in handy for that, but I was able to use that repair layer in this case easy enough because the windows didn't have a lot of outline, little uh, like the shutters weren't there. I didn't have little cutouts to worry about. So that worked very well. So what you can do also is get very close to the window and flash it and that way you also won't have a lot of flash going back into the room you won't get those reflections and you'll still be able to overexpose that window frame and that's all that you need to do once you do that then when you put that layer in darkened mode in Photoshop those overexposed areas go away and only the outside view will be shown Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.